The narrative about the NFT community is that we are a bunch of rogue, degenerate investors that are just wasting money on these NFTs. And the media like to paint the pictures as if we're just all a bunch of crazy millennials buying a bunch of JPEGs hoping to get rich overnight. Now, that is a complete stereotype because a lot of people are not even millennials because this thing definitely stretches over various generations. However, that is a stereotype and it is very laughable on many levels. But today we're going to look at why NFTs, in my opinion, are more precious than even money. Now, that might sound like a bold, crazy statement as if I'm just trying to get clicks with it, but it definitely is. First of all, you have to understand what money is and how it actually works. But just really quick, I'm going to give you a broad overview without giving you a masterclass on crypto and going into all these different things. If you look throughout history, people have used many different things as mediums of exchange or ways to store up wealth. And if you think of very primitive economies. It's all about the barter system. If you have apples and I have oranges and I want some apples, I'll trade you. Or if you have cows and I have goats, we can trade each other to get what we want. Instead of uh, buying things with credit cards and what have you, we're swapping work. You're a painter. I'm a builder. We can do this thing together. You do what you do. I do what I do and we'll call it even. So that is a very primitive system. But the more complex an economy gets, there's different Uh, things and it becomes just very complicated. For example, if I'm a goat farmer or goat herder or whatever you want to call it, and I want to transact with someone who is a painter, that painter might not want goats. However, I want paint. So I'm going to have to go through different levels. So that is where money really came about and how people started to swap different things. And this is just a very simplistic way of explaining everything. However, I'm just trying to give you a quick overview and really explain how all of this uh, thought actually came together. And throughout history, people have used different things such as shells, beads, stones, and most recently, precious metals. And that, of course, is silver and gold, things of that nature. And with the exception of gold, modern technology has allowed the increase of the production of whatever this monetary value thing is, whatever they're using as money through society, can increase with demand. Again, with the exception of gold, because even silver, believe it or not, can be mined faster than the demand can actually consume it. And throughout history, there have been very many tests. And most recently, I can even think of, I think it was the 70s where uh, some billionaires tried to uh, really put all of their wealth in silver. And they found out very quickly that silver production can pick up in a way that they ended up losing billions of dollars. Now, diamonds, even them, a lot of people say diamonds are precious. But if you really do the research, the only reason why diamonds are precious is because the supply is controlled. But within the last 20 or 30 years or so, definitely during my lifetime, people have seen that the price of diamonds are not only coming down in a sense, but also different different diamonds are coming onto the market as far as sources, because they're all not coming through one source anymore. The Beers Corporation, that was really controlling something like 90% of all the diamonds on the market. And you can actually even manufacture factor diamond. So technology is keeping up with that. But the only thing is gold. For the most part, if you look through history, it has very slow increases in supply and it is actually fixed because it's not like the earth can spit out more of this gold. That is true also with silver and copper and other things. But as far as mining it, technology can allow you to mine more then the actual demand is for it. That's why it is not really a good store of value as gold has been historically for money and transacting. And back in the day, they actually used to make coins out of gold. We're talking about the Roman Empire and at different times, even the Egyptians and so forth, that they were using these precious metals because they were really accepted. They had a whole bunch of properties. They were hard to get and so forth. So Throughout history, different cultures all around the world, gold has really stood up as something to have value. But the thing about it is transporting it. It's one thing to just trade some gold coins to your neighbors. But if you're talking about international trade or really large sums of money, we're talking about loading up ships. And there's all sorts of treasure hunts and things of that of trying to find sunken Spanish ships all throughout the ocean that were coming from South America and going back to Spain. Gold is very hard transport and it is heavy. It takes up a lot of space. It takes a lot of resources. So there's a lot of waste in transporting it. So that's how they got onto the whole monetary system being on dollars, paper money. It's because it just makes things a lot easier. And summing it up again, just going through a lot of history, condensing it from the 1870s through like the 1930s, there was a gold standard with pretty much means for most of the countries that whatever note, that paper money that they had, the US, Europe, and multiple countries, really, it was exchangeable for 
that value in gold. So there was always gold backing whatever dollar or uh, pound or whatever it was called in that local currency. However, that really started to change in the 30s and definitely by the 70s, that whole system was completely abandoned. And now what we have is a fiat currency system. So if you're going to exchanges, you'll see that it will say paying with fiat or paying with crypto or exchanging, depositing, those types of words, they'll, you'll always see that it's either crypto or fiat. And a lot of people don't even know what that really means. What is this fiat? And simply put, Fiat, how I like to summarize it, is faith. There is really nothing backing fiat currency except faith in that particular currency itself. And that's what the whole world has been running on. It is not backed by gold or anything of that nature. Some people like to say is the stronger the economy, the more GDP, the more population, or whatever economic metrics they like to use is what backs the strength of that dollar. But that is not true. Or not just dollar, but that particular currency. It could be the euro, the yuan, the yen, or peso in various countries whatever it is called paper money they're all the same and they're fiat currencies and it is based purely on faith if you do the research there is literally nothing backing it whatsoever it's just under the assumption that the next person will accept it as payment for whatever it is whether it is those goats and those paintings that i was talking about earlier whatever it is the people that hold it just believe and know in theory tomorrow, someone will accept it for what they want. So that's what gives it value. As soon as someone loses faith in that now, that's when there's runs on the banks and people are trying to get out uh, their money to go can convert it into gold and land and other things. It's because they're losing faith in the system. And that could be very dangerous. But this whole global worldwide system, generally speaking, again, I'm giving you a lot of information, just trying to sum it down. And then I'll get back to the whole NFTs and how all of this Web3 stuff ties in into it and it's pretty cool in my opinion but since world war ii pretty much every single currency around the world has been backed by the u.s dollar so there's not gold in people's reserves what they were doing is they were putting u.s dollars into their central bank reserves and that's what they were using to basically help to prop up their currencies however there is nothing backing the u.s dollar other than the faith in the u.s dollar so because of this now that's why the whole system is literally built on faith because a lot of countries are popped up or their currencies are propped up by it the U.S. dollar, but the U.S. dollar is propped up by nothing other than faith. So whether the people have direct faith in that particular local currency or direct faith in the U.S. dollar, honestly, that is what is keeping the whole entire system up. So with all that said, now let's get everything back together and we'll tie this all together. And if you really want to go deep into this, the best place to uh, look that is a pretty long read, but it's called the Bitcoin Standard, which is an amazing book. There's also an audiobook, ebook version, and I'll leave a link to that in the show notes. However, it really goes deep into that. I think the audiobook is probably like 16 or 17 hours. So I tried to condense a whole bunch of things in just a few minutes. But just keep in mind, generally speaking, the only real world utility for a fiat currency or money, as we call it, that, you know, we're transacting with in the real world, dollars, pesos, euros, whatever it is, is that someone else is willing to accept it for whatever you want. Other than that, it's good for kindling fires. It is uh, insulation, maybe, to keep out the cold. And in many cases, those uh, bills are actually made out of cotton. So maybe could make some clothing. But other than that, mm, it's pretty much worthless. So back to the NFTs. Now, we like to talk about utility and all of these different things. But utility with NFTs is, in my opinion, actually much more than even these currencies that we say are worth so much money. And the news likes to say that we're wasting money on NFTs and all of these different things is at least NFTs are unique. The whole premise around these things is that they are non fungible tokens. So in the case of these bills, whatever currency that in the case of these currency bills, each one of them is fungible. It does not matter which hundred dollar bill you give me. It's still worth a hundred dollars. I don't care what the serial number says. They're all the same. I can go out and I can buy my groceries and fill up my gas. Well, at the price of gas right now, I don't know how much gas and groceries you'll be getting with a hundred dollars, but you see what I'm trying to say. It does not matter which one it is. You'll accept it as payment and you'll spend it. Now with NFTs, they are unique. Many cases, they have art pieces that are associated with it. If it is a general 
generative project. They might have, you know, 10,000 generative pieces, but it could be a one of one artist that's creating something and it's unique. You're able to track the history of it on the blockchain, see who purchased it, when it was purchased and all those different things. And in many cases, there's a lot of utility as far as access to certain things. Again, that is very similar to the money itself, because in theory, Nobody really values the money. They value the access that the money is going to give them in the case of the painting or buying the groceries or whatever it might be. So these NFTs do have that same utility giving you access to something else. But also, they're a technological marvel in the sense that it really reduces the friction. There is no middleman, gated communities, if you will, as far as big bankers or just anyone in a high position keeping out the little guy, if you will. Anyone can get into these things. There is no trusted third party that is limiting access to certain people. Everything is ran through the blockchain, and that is the ultimate faith is the blockchain is fair for everybody. It is an open ledger. You can see what's going on. You can trust it. And really, it is very hard to deceive anyone, right? So that is the real value of it. And of course, it is even more easy to transport than paper money. Because depending which cryptocurrency it is and how these NFTs are being sent, whichever blockchain it is, it could literally be sent around the world in a matter of seconds. For example, if I'm sending a wax NFT to someone in Japan, in one click, it can be on the other side of the globe. And it's pretty amazing. It's not as easy and quick with money. Sure, we have the digital cash and systems such as PayPal, but honestly, the money itself or the value does not make that transaction to go from bank one to bank two for days. It just so happens that they put the little express notification, if you will, and give someone the access to that money. But the money itself actually takes days to transport around the world. But that is a different subject in itself. So these NFTs, these blockchains, blockchains, this crypto, all of this stuff actually has much more utility, is easier to transport, and it is actually a very amazing system. So a lot of people that say all of these different things are saying the fluctuation of price is going up and down. Well, they're not understanding that the reason why there is so much volatility compared to, say, fiat currencies, generally speaking, although we have seen just ridiculous inflation over the last two years because governments have been printing and sending money off like crazy. So prices are going up. And that's another economic discussion in itself. However, the main reason why we don't see such crazy volatility is because people, again, it is based on faith and they know that these governments are making it legal tender in whatever country it is. So by law, somebody has to be able to spend that money and they will accept it as payment within those borders. So that's really what keeps this whole system of faith running. It's because by law, you have to have faith in that system. However, when people lose faith in the government, then they also will lose faith in the currency itself. So that might just be so far-fetched and even hard to understand or comprehend. But the best example that I could possibly give for that is Iraq. And if you look through history, once Iraq started to have all sorts of sanctions and what have you, they actually had two currencies arise. There was the original Swiss dinar and then the Saddam dinar. And because of all of the battles and things that were taking place, all the sanctions, it made it very hard to still create the currency. So they ended up with two currencies in the country. And when the U.S. invaded in 2003, they were actually both being used. The Swiss dinar, which was technically not the currency within that country, was still being used for the simple fact that it had a fixed supply. There was nothing the government could really do to alter how that was being in production, what have you. But the people were taking it because they were under the assumption and the belief that once the U.S. basically kicked Saddam out of power, that it, they would honor that dollar. And they were able to convert that into whatever new money it was. And because it was a fixed supply, meaning that it was out of circulation, the plates weren't making any more of that money. The people had more faith in that than they actually did in the government. So that was probably one of the uh, best examples that I could possibly think of where the faith in the government was actually uh, lost. Therefore, the, the currency itself, the faith in that was lost. So the Saddam dinar did not have the same value and the weight as the Swiss dinar, although it was not the illegal tender of that country. So that might be a lot to swallow, a lot to comprehend, but just think of it this way. Anything that people have faith in is going to have more value. And even when we go over and look at NFTs, what really separates an NFT that is selling for, let's say, a floor price of $300 and one that has a floor price of $3,000? Is it really worth 10 times more? And what does worth really mean anyways? Let's say they're both 10,000 PFP generative projects. 
They both have active communities, fans that like their art, and relatively close social media followings. What really separates one from the other being valued at that much more? And it's typically things such as the belief that the value of one is going to continue to go up a little bit more than the other one, or the faith in the fact that they believe that more people are going to want this in the future. For whatever reason, people put more faith into one project than the other. Now, this is not saying that these projects do not have anything behind them. Of course, I went through the utility and... Basically, I'm shifting my entire focus and my career, if you will, into Web3. So to say that I don't have faith in this stuff and there's nothing behind it is that is definitely not what I'm saying. But what I'm simply saying is it is not crazy for people to invest their currencies, their fiat currencies into NFTs for the simple fact that there are certain elements in it that are similar because it is based on faith. However, there is a limited quantity. It's not like we can print more bored apes. It is locked in at that 10,000. And all the other different additional things that I mentioned earlier is why this thing has value. And in my opinion, I don't think it is just gambling or wasting quote unquote money on these NFTs. Obviously, I don't because as I've said, I'm testing the depth of this water with both feet. But with that said, I think I covered a lot and I don't really want to go too deep into those things, but I definitely recommend if this is something that really interests you, the Bitcoin standard, by far one of the best explanations of economies, currencies, and everything that's going on in this crypto space and why this blockchain technology is a big deal and it is definitely not going anywhere and this is the future. So I'll just leave a link to that in the show notes and as usual... And if that's something that you're interested in, just a heads up, it is an affiliate link. So not that I'm going to be getting rich off of promoting books on Amazon, but I just want you to let you know that it is an affiliate link and I do own the book myself. I do love it. And using that link does help the show out. So as usual, thank you for listening, spending this time with me as we build Web3 together. So until the next time, later.